Fashion Snoop's Culture is a place to go for long-range planning with macro trend, color, and cultural sentiment reports, as well as a place to go for responses to what is happening right now in our society and with our consumers. To locate Fashion Snoop's, start on the library's homepage, fitnyc.edu slash library. Then you can go to Databases, and this is where all of our online subscriptions can be located. The easiest way to locate Fashion Snoops is either to go to the A to Z list and look under F, or to come down to where we have a collection of forecasting and trend reporting databases. This shorter list makes it very easy to find Fashion Snoops right away. So when you first open up Fashion Snoop's Culture, you will notice that there is a fairly lengthy uh, group of submenus. The first three of these, Macro Trends, Color, and Cultural Sentiments, are really more about the long-term, uh, the long-range plan, the big picture. These reports you will later on see referenced in the product category reports, such as the visionary and forecasting reports for women's wear, men's wear, home, beauty, and so forth. The next three categories, opportunities, consumer insights, new and now, these are a little bit more for staying agile, staying uh, responsive to what is happening in the world around you. The next two items on the menu, AI Tracker and Points of Focus, are a little bit different. AI Tracker, just briefly, is a feed of articles from other blogs and websites of note. And Points of Focus is basically all of the content that you would find in Fashion Snoop's culture but organized in terms of these umbrella categories. So let's begin with a look at the first three items on the submenu, the ones that are more or less better for long-range planning. So the first one let's go to is Macro Trends, the first on the list. Macro Trends, as the name implies, are really big picture reports projecting into the future uh, based on cultural shifts and how Fashion Snoops sees these shifts evolving. Even the names give you a sense of the largeness of these stories. If we go to Eco Virtuous, for instance, what we get is a, a mood image, a nice succinct overview about what this macro trend covers, as well as bulleted points that they call signals, points of evidence that the analysts at Fashion Snoops take as, as proof of this trend. Within this report, we also find that there are micro trends. These micro trends, as the name suggests, of course, are more specific, more finite in their view. Once again, you're getting a, a written overview about what this micro trend involves. The next thing you see is an evolutionary map. This is their way of signaling to their users that this is a trend that they have been tracking for a while, documenting for a while, and that it, it didn't come out of nowhere, it didn't come out of somebody's imagination, that they can go back and look at earlier major macro trend reports from previous years, four previous years, and find where this trend is coming from. Now, the next item over from macro trends is color. But before we look at color, um, I think it's very important to know about cultural sentiment. And this is because a lot of the projections about color, macro color, are based on these reports on cultural sentiment. So cultural sentiment are about consumer feelings and emotions as a barometer as to what is going on in society. And they are a distillation of various macro trends. To take a case in point, let's look at the cultural sentiment called EDGE. So when we look at this report, 
it, we can see that is a uh, forecast for winter 21-22. We have a mood image. We are seeing apparel in this image. Um, so at this point, there is sort of visibly a reference to apparel. And it basically is describing what this mood is all about, what this cultural sentiment is all about, and also where it comes from. So they are mapping to the macro trends. We can see that this is a, a hybrid, a combination of the digital deep end story as well as a superhuman story, along with various micro trends belonging to each. It's culminating in a mood or cultural sentiment or way of feeling in our culture that they're titling edge. And there is a color associated with it. So if you were to just go to color first, you would find information about this color called flow. Um, but you wouldn't necessarily make the connection of where it came from. So when you visit cultural sentiment first, you have the backstory on the sentiment color, in this case, flow. We also have a report, both of these are clickable for more information, about design direction. So this would be the use of the color in combination, in pattern, in combination with other colors, etc. And it talks about key drivers and manifestations for this sentiment. So where else are they finding this sentiment being expressed already in our culture? <clears throat> so it's, it's a nice long report and one of the things I love about Fashion Snoops is that here and elsewhere they give you a word bank because so much of our searching for images is text-based. So they're giving you a really nice word bank here for both image and text results that are useful. Now if we go to color, we're going to see edge again. We're going to see other cultural sentiment colors. And then we will get updates on shifts in those colors and shifts in palettes that incorporate those colors. So just to use the same theme, if I go to flow, under sentiment colors in the color reports section, I get something quite different. And a lot of this information is very, very practical um, in that it's going to tell you um, what Pantone it is, what RGB it is, and so forth. So this is a lot of really practical information um, as well as mood information. And they also are now referencing directly where and how this is applied in the apparel markets and in beauty. And so they go through the color matches. So this is very, very much about your color palette and setting that up and practical tools for creating a mood board and for confirmation of color prediction. In the last half of this video, we are going to be focusing on the next three areas, opportunities, consumer insights, and new and now. As I mentioned earlier, these three categories are uh, more geared towards staying agile and keeping up with what is happening now so that you can respond appropriately. However, I am going to point out that anything that is about what is happening now is always going to have long-range import. So if you are doing long-range planning, do familiarize yourself with what's happening under these three areas. So let's take a look. Opportunities. Opportunities is where you're going to find reports with actionable items that reflect either what is happening right now in our culture or in our world, or which focus on ways to proceed um, in certain circumstances or surrounding certain events. So it's no surprise to see that a lot of these are marked as being about opportunities 
taking place during the COVID pandemic because this is being filmed during that time. So these are very much focused on now, what's happening now, but with an eye also towards trends that may have lasting impact into the future. They are organized by fairly broad categories, um, but this is where you would definitely find things about certain demographics as well as some retail focused reports. Now consumer insights, you will also find dem demographic information. The consumer insights are about emerging. Once again, there's that long-term indication, emerging mindsets um, of specific cohorts. So yes, specific demographic groups. Um, and for instance, the first thing we see is a consumer snapshot for Gen Z's at home. So it's very consumer focused and it's focused on a particular group, parents, Gen Z, um, fitness buffs, street protesters. So it's consumer oriented, reflecting what's happening right now, but for a very specific cohort. New and now, on the other hand, is more focused outward toward things that are impacting industry. Now certainly you're going to find consumer information here. Once again, it's about what's happening right now as the name implies. So we see some overlap, but we're not getting, you know, this is just about parents or what have you. So you can see right now COVID, BLM, but also profiles of particular new platforms or emerging companies or trends within certain industries. So we have a whole report about Discord. We have a report about the safety dividers for restaurant retail because all of that is going to be important. It's important right now, but it's going to be important um, probably for the long range. So with these three being a little bit more about the short term and pivoting, I think you can still see how it is an iterative process and the macro trends, the micro trends and what's happening now that it's, it, it all works together in a cycle. So whether you're wanting to keep track of, you know, what you need to be knowing for tomorrow's meeting or what you are trying to plan in terms of product development for a product that is going to be debuting in a year. Do look at everything, but I think it's useful to see the first three as being more long range and the next three categories as being a little bit more short term. And as I pointed out before, the last two items uh, on this list, AI tracker, covers everything and points of focus also folds everything they've been talking about um, and then reorganizes it, restructures it under topics. So I hope this has been a useful look at FS Culture. Thank you and if you have any questions please be sure to use our Ask the Library service.